Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Today, I'm going to show you how to clean up skin in a super efficient way. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer sharing my industry secrets with you. So maybe subscribe to my channel for free. Also, this time, I want you to give me a challenge. So write in the comments something I should photograph. I will pick one of the comments and show you the result in one of my future videos. All right, so let's get started here. And by the way, I want to show you something that you should not do and then how to do it right. So here is a comparison on how it is done with the in-paint brush. As you can see here, this is a clean up with the in-paint brush. And this is my method. You can see how cleaner it is. Now, the biggest problem with the in-paint brush is that it sources the copy on how it fixes the skin from anywhere in the picture and just makes kind of a rough guess what could fit. And this is why when you look here, for example, in this area down here, you get these problematic areas where the brightness isn't right. And also if we zoom in here, you can see there is problems in the continuity of the texture of the skin. These little, um, how can I say, these little wrinkles you have, these little uh, uh, pores you have, all these kind of things they should match up, they should keep their natural flow and also the color, the brightness, the contrast, everything has to match. So I will show you how to do that. And please um, watch the full video so you get the actual method and not just part of it because otherwise not gonna work. All right, so what you want to do, you start off with the filter frequency separation. That is the first important part. And what you want to do here, you have here the split of the screen into a black and white area and here into a very blurry area. So the black and white area is the high frequency and the blurry area is the low frequency. The important part that you want to look out for is here the radio slider. You don't uh, touch this down here, this doesn't matter. Uh, use the radio slider and move it up so you have all of the details and also the shadow of the details in here. So you see all these kind of little skin damages. We want to have the texture of that, but also including most of the shadow of that. And then on the right side here, we end up with a rather blurry picture. This is really important for a reason I will tell you in a second. So let's click on apply here. And this will create for us two layers. One is high frequency, one is low frequency, right? as we have already talked about. Now, here's the important part. When you turn off low frequency, you get this gray picture and you can see that all of the values here are the same. So you have gray and then darker gray areas, right? Where the shadows are. And this is all of the information that we work with. While on the low frequency, we have different colors, right? And here is the important part why we need to move the shadow over to the high frequency. Because when we copy or when we change color information, we have to match the colors up. But when we have gray tones, we don't have to do that. It is a lot easier, right? Okay, so how do we now fix these areas here. Easy. You're going to use your clone brush. Now, here are some very important parts you need to understand. First of all, set it to a small size. I also use hardness zero, so it's very soft. Opacity 100, rather small size because you don't want to go in big steps. You don't want to see where you create your strokes with your clone brush. The second very, very important part is always source from an area that has the same pattern and uh, the same skin texture as in the area where you want to use your clone brush. So if you source from here, but you would use it down here where you don't have these little lines, you would suddenly have a patch with these little lines in it. That's not good. Also the other way around, if you have an area where you don't have these little lines and you, pu you put it up here, suddenly there is a smooth skin area, doesn't fit, doesn't look natural. So look for the continuity of the skin. Another important thing to look out for is you can see here on the left side that the picture is getting more blurred. So always when you have a blurred area, source from a other blurred area. Don't use source from a sharp area because of course, not going to look good. Okay, so what are we going to do here, right? 
the clone brush works in a way where you have this little plus that you can see up here and then you have the circle. Now the plus is where you source from and the circle is where you put the information that you copy over basically, right? So with the Alt key on your keyboard, when you press that, this turns your... Um, your mouse into this little cross and there you can set a new source point. You can see when I click, every time I click this little uh, black cross is moving around and then when I let go of my Alt key, I get the circle again and as soon as I click, this will define the distance between the source point and the point where I put the information, right? Okay, so of course you want to source from a clean area. So for example, if I want to remove this here, I want to source from down here. So like this, as you can see, now we have removed this. So now this can be cleaned up in a very easy way. You will, you will do a lot of clicks here. Because we, as I said, want to go with little steps. And at the beginning, you're probably going to go a little bit slower. But then over time, when you get more accustomed to it, if you have a little bit more experience, this process will go faster and faster. And this is also important because, of course, um, well, time is money. So you want to have a process that is easy and fast, as you can see here. So that's pretty cool. Boom, boom, boom. We can go very fast. Always look where the uh, cross is going so it's not going into an area that has a very, very different texture. So I will clean up the forehead here. Another important part you want to look out for is don't make it squeaky clean. Make it somewhat clean, but leave some parts there so it still looks natural. It still looks like a human and not like a robot. It doesn't look like a computer animation or something. That is really important because sometimes uh, you see pictures that are like, it looks like a candle. It doesn't look like skin anymore, right? You know what I mean. So you want to avoid that. Uh, only remove the kind of offending areas in your picture in your, on the skin and leave the rest as is. So you can see now, let's, let's clean up these areas down here a little bit too. So we have everything on the forehead over the eyebrows. There we go. So this looks pretty good. Let's turn on the low frequency again. And you can see we are already pretty good. There's an area I don't like, so we will clean up that a little bit. Okay, there we go. Now, here is another thing to look out for. You can see that we still have some of these um, color changes left. Now, here's an amazing trick on how to solve that. Instead of going in here with your clone brush again and trying to fix this somehow because this will end up in a mess and it's also very time consuming, what we are going to do instead is we are going to use the paint mixer brush. And what you want to do here is, first of all, always start with a clean brush. That's really, really important. So go up here where it says clean brush and click on that before you click down here. You have to do this every single time. There is no automatic uh, clean brush. All right. So what you want to do is to set the strength rather low. I have it at 25% here and then decide on the width. I would do the width a little bit bigger. In this case, not as small as before because you want to move larger, pa larger patches so it still is smooth. All right. And then what you're going to do is you move, but only in the area where the colors match up. So don't move from the shadow over here into the lit area or don't go here to the highlights and brush this over here because this will then move the highlight over, right? So what you want to do is you go here and you move this a little bit around like so, and then you clean your brush and you move this a little bit around like so. Let's see. Okay. And then you can see when I move now my brush over here, this is darker. I don't want to have that. So let's click here on clean and move this around a little bit. And you can see now that this is smoothing out all the colors, all the shadows in the background. Let's go and look at just our low frequency. You can see here, for example, we have some more here. I can clean my brush and I can then move this around. And now this is smooth, as you can see. All the colors are flowing softly into each other. This is what we want to have, right? I would advise you to do this while you have the high frequency turned on because if you smooth it out in this view, 
it might look super good here, but then if you turn on a high frequency, it might not match up. So do this in a controlled way. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget a challenge for me and see you in the next tutorial. Maybe subscribe to my channel, maybe join my Facebook group. Okay, see you soon. Bye.